Well, this award season, the most talked about film has been Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. A multiverse comedy drama, it has eye-popping graphics and wild twists and turns, but at its center, the movie is about family, and this complex and compassionate picture has been helped to be painted by actress Stephanie Hsu, and that role earned the 32-year-old her first Academy Award nomination for Best Supporting Actress. And Hsu plays a dual character at two ends of the spectrum, but still very much alike. One is a disgruntled daughter desperate for understanding. The other is an omniversal villain who is seeking to be understood and to not be alone. And Hsu has been on our show before, just a few months before her Oscar nod. This time, our Lindsay Davis talks with the nominee about just how important these 95th Oscars are as the Academy nominates the greatest number of Asian actors it ever has in a single year. I have felt everything your daughter has felt. I know the joy and the pain of having you as my mother. Are you super excited? <laughs> I am excited. I mean, all my friends are in there, people I love, people I admire. So it's that's really special. If there's somebody you could bump into on the red carpet, mm. who would it be? I will say I hadn't watched The Fablemans the last time I saw Steven Spielberg. I do feel excited to just extend my gratitude and graces for so much of what he's done for the film industry. I think the coolest so far was definitely meeting Tilda Swinton. That was mm. that was pretty Neat. <laughs> Where were you when you found out about the nomination? I was on an airplane. <laughs> I was flying back to America from Sydney, Australia. I'm filming a movie there right now. I keep going and then filming for two days and then flying back. So I was on my way back. My phone just started exploding and I was like, what's going on? And it was one of my friends. She was the first one who just said, like, holy beep. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I kind of knew then. But you were on a plane, so you had to stay contained. I right? just stay. I literally was in my little pod, just like by myself. And what was really wild, too, was that I knew that the nominations were coming out, and I wanted to do a ritual to honor the work that we had done on the movie. And, you know, we filmed in 2020. It's been a long time. It's been a roller coaster ride even since its release. And so I wanted to do this little ritual that no matter what happened, that I could look back on our film and be really proud of us. So I watched the movie on the plane. I've seen it a bunch of times, but it's been a while, and people love watching it on a plane because it's a safe space to cry. Do you still want to do your party? We can do whatever we want. Nothing matters. <laughs> so it felt like a really beautiful end to the flight of starting with rewatching the movie and ending with so many of us being celebrated in this way. Um, yeah, it felt really sweet. And Really, the movie itself is a wild ride. I mean, because it's it's a drama, it's comedy, but it's also action-packed. When you first read the script, what did you think? Well, it's embarrassing to say, but I really understood it. <laughs> I think the Daniels and I are really cut from the same cloth when it comes to senses of humor and big-hearted, big thought stories. And to their credit, even though the movie is really wild, the story somehow works and you, you can feel the family through it all. And that is legible in the script as well. How difficult was it? Because you really are playing two totally distinct characters. Yeah. I mean, you're Joy, the daughter, who's really depressed and really kind of struggling for acceptance within her own family. And then you're Jobu at the same time, yeah. like with the villain of the multiverse. Yeah. So uh, how did that work? Is, is, pulling yourself in those two totally different directions. I always say that Joy and Jobu are two extremes of the same core, and that core is nihilism. What is the truth? Nothing matters. And it was really important for us to create a villain that wasn't just funny or scary for no reason, but had a really strong emotional and philosophical core. They come. And that's the beautiful thing about both of them is that at the end of the day, it really is still joy. It is still the daughter. So I feel like that was kind of the rooting through line 
that even when things got crazy, I had to always remember that underneath all that was still that same daughter that is just longing for her mother to see her. Talk to me about what this means as far as representation, because at a, the heart of it, it's really a story about immigration, but then it goes so far beyond that. And what that means for the Asian American community to be considered for you know, best picture of the year. One of the things I'm most proud of with our movie is that it's so wild, so imaginative, so big hearted that it somehow transcends identity politics, that it actually just becomes about a family. And it's reached so many people of all different backgrounds and really is a piece of art. And I feel excited about that space that's opened up where we get to have a more diverse fabric of storytellers, but that the things that we make don't necessarily always have to be about the ways in which we are different. It can actually just be about what's inside of us, what we're trying to communicate, how we're trying to process. And at the same time, when my mom came to see it at the premiere, she was in tears. She's not an emotional person. She's not a cinephile whatsoever. She does love Michelle Yeoh. But at the end of the movie, you know, she had tears in her eyes and she pointed to the screen and she said, that's me. And I really was processing that because she didn't say, oh, that's you. She said, that's me. And I realized it was the first time my mother has ever seen her story on a screen. So just to really feel how much is healing intergenerationally is really special. When you were actually doing the role, did you feel any of the parallels with your own life with, with you and your mother? Absolutely. I definitely think our story, our, our film does such a good job of describing first generation, second generation experience in an immigrant family. And there were definitely a lot of overlaps. First movie that you ever saw that really made an impact. I think it. it was Flubber. Mm. <laughs> I loved Flubber. Favorite snack to eat while you're watching a movie? Ooh, like a dark piece of chocolate. If you could have dinner with any movie character, oh, wow. who would it be? Robin Williams and Flubber? <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Yeah. That's great. And you can watch the Oscars on ABC Sunday night at 8 p.m. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.